Okay, hello everyone. Today we are going to be checking out Intel's limited edition GPU, the A770. This is the 16 gig variant. So yeah, let's begin. Okay, so, um, yeah, I am unboxing, ooh, tape kind of come off. So I'm unboxing this because Intel claims, it, it says even, I think it says limited edition, but it's not limited. But you know what, with how Intel GPU unit is doing at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if this is their last foray into consumer grade graphics. So yeah, let's check it out. I'm gonna post that small Intel sticker here. It's pretty easy to open. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's see what's inside first. It says let's play. Oh come on. I think, I think there's something in here. Okay, I can't. Okay, there it is. So you get your quick start guide. Okay, pretty fair enough. And what do we have here? Okay, it's just a thank you card. You have your sticker here, so I'll preserve that. Honestly, so the graphics card itself, it's sold out right now, I believe, but it is, let me double check. So, one second here. Okay, so the card itself is around 350 i believe um it's an interesting card because again people will never know if this is gonna be intel's last foray oh it's actually pretty it's a heft it, there's quite a heft in here i'm not gonna dismantle it like gamers nexus um i'm not here to do that i'm just here for the unboxing stuff um yeah there you go it says Arx A770 Limited Edition, which again, it's not limited. So, again, uh, for a 16 gig graphics card, um, yeah, 350, it's not bad. It's actually not bad. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's the RGB cable. Uh, let's see. I believe it's the RGB cable. Okay, there you go. So yeah, it powers the RGB for the graphics. This is similar to AMD's um, Wraith Spire. So this one itself, um, just so it, you can light up the GPU with the graphic, um, you can essentially get some lighting effects in there. Um, I don't know if it's just blue, but yeah. Overall, so I guess intake, there's no exhaust in the back. So this is solid. There's nothing in here. But I believe it intakes here and the exhaust is in the back here. From what I understand, the path of the airflow is. Um, yeah, or, yeah, this one is sealed too so yeah i'm curious on what the actual performance is like but it's pretty simple packaging um let's see here 
Okay, yeah, I think that's all there is on this card. So let's hook it up to our test bench and we'll see how the installation process goes. Okay, so installing Intel's graphics drivers, it's a bit different with how we do it with AMD and NVIDIA. So with Intel, we actually have to dr download Intel Driver and Support Assistant or Intel DSA. Um, I believe you can download the normal graphics drivers, but you do have to dig deep. It's not the most user-friendly way of doing it, but I don't know. On Intel's website, their implementation is a bit weird with how drivers goes. First, you have to download DSA. Once you have DSA downloaded, have to install it. Then once it's installed, you do have to do your restart. Once the restart is done, now you have the task, um, taskbar notification to update your Intel driver. It opens up the Intel's website, so it'll scan your system and what do you need. So now you can install the ARC drivers. Pretty straightforward. Personally, I try not to install any additional software. Like even for NVIDIA, I don't install like NVIDIA's um, GeForce Experience or even AMD's uh, additional software when it comes to drivers. I just install the pure driver and that's it. And do of course, you have to do a clean install to make sure everything's fine. After that, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so it wasn't as straightforward as I wanted it to be. Okay, after install, I did encounter an issue where the image didn't come back to the screen. I had to actually plug or unplug and plug the, mo the HDMI cable again on the back of the graphics card. Uh, it did work after that, but it's not an optimal experience. Another issue I found that it wasn't being picked up by my Elgato um, capture, capture device. So I'm using an HD60 to do capture, and it wasn't showing up there. I tried it with my PS5. It was working. I do have to try it again with... Um, another graphics card that I have to see if it works but yeah that is a big disappointment and the last one I encountered is this Patay sa pangamaril ang isang barangay kagawad sa Bohor, Cavite. Nakunang pa ng CCTV ang insidente na nangyari sa harap mismo ng barangay hall ayon sa What you just saw is something I encountered after switching resolution in F1 2021. I was trying to do some benchmarks on this and I was doing a resolution change from 1080p to 1440p which 
my 14 my 4k monitor doesn't support so it started blinking like that and then i switched it back to uh 4k so now after switching between those three i encountered that flickering screen i'm going to try and replicate it but um i did a quick repli uh, replication test by skipping not going to the 1440p setting um but yeah, I need to verify if it's if that is an actual Intel Arc issue or is that like an issue with my monitor. Um, but yeah, that flickering sc uh, screen was kind of um, crazy. So yeah, on to the benchmarks. From the benchmarks and the footage you are seeing at the moment, the gaming performance, not half bad. It's constantly delivering higher than 60 frames per second at 1080p, and even at 4K, it's pretty playable. So that's it, right? Review over? Well, the games you saw were only half its gaming story. The footage you are seeing right now is pretty much from the same game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The difference? This one is running on DX11 mode. This is a known issue where its performance on games that run on DX11 and below is pretty atrocious at 1080p and unplayable at 4K. 
you might say, you know what, I'll just play DX12 games. Sorry to say, majority of PC games are still running on older graphics API. As of the creation of this video, there are only 261 games that uses DX12, while there are 3,159 games that are still running on DX11, and more if you count the games running on even older APIs. To be clear, this is a known issue, and according to Intel, this is something that will be a constant work in progress, and they will provide updates to improve performance in the future. With this in mind, it's incredibly hard to make a recommendation based on future promises. Finally, let's go to the physical design of the card. Personally, I think it's pretty nice, despite being held together by glue and tape. The slim design makes it ideal for small form factor builds. I'd say my only gripe about the design is the orientation of the PCI power slots where the locking mechanism is face inward, making it harder for people that has larger fingers to take out the PCI power cable. Since your fingers does have problem fitting in between the heatsink and the card itself. Now, is the ARC A770 or even the ARC A750 limited edition worth getting? I'd say for the majority of the consumer, it's hard to recommend this card, as there are multiple issues with both drivers and its accompanying software that will turn off the average consumer. Remember, this card costs around 300 to 375 USD, and there are multiple AMD and Nvidia cards that are on or below this price point that will perform a lot better. So, who is this card for? To be honest, I think this is more of an enthusiast grade card. The people are willing to tinker around, experiment on the hardware, as well as swallow that early adapter pains. Alright, that wraps up our quick look into the ARC A770. If you have any questions about this GPU, leave the comments down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. For now, see ya!